arts and all that goes with it in Nevada County. So how are you all holding up? Juliet, why don't you kick off? Well, doing very, very well. Um, trying to uh, keep the gallery going, which has been fun, uh, challenging, but exciting and fun. Um, we started our first online show with Ruth Chase's beautiful uh, show called Home. And it's very appropriate these days um, because while the, the pieces were about home and what home means to each person, now it's taken even more of a powerful meaning. And so it's a beautiful exhibit. The first time I've ever tried to do something online. So, you know, but it's, I love it. And um, we're doing new things all the time. We're putting videos of the artists and uh, our gallery is still going. It's just online. It's virtual at the moment because our beloved foundry is closed at the moment. And we want them to come back to so we can all have a place to, to celebrate again. And where is the virtual online gallery? What's the URL? It's osbornwoodsgallery.com. And I can send the link as well. Yeah, if you could post that um, in the chat, that would be really helpful to all panelists sure. and atten attendees. That would be great. Sounds uh, good. I'll do that. Thank you. Eliza, what's, what's new in, in, in the big world? Start, do unmute yourself. <laughs> You'd think I'd know better by now, wouldn't you? <laughs> um, so for us um we we have uh you know various different programs that are rolling out as much as is possible in the virtual sphere so we're turning on a dime literally just a dime in order to ensure that we're continuing to serve the 1000 school kids that we would otherwise have served in classrooms per week um, online, um, home, the project which Juliet just described is a project of Nevada County Arts Council, so we're so delighted that that can go um, live as much as possible online. But probably one of the most important things that we've been doing since, um, since our shelter-in-place order is to survey the field. So, um, just this week we closed out an early impact survey um, and in which we uh, asked 257 participants, 60 of which were non-profit arts organizations across the whole county, what the projected impacts of um, COVID-19 were going to mean for them. And that helps us plan for and advocate for and carry the torch for um, the arts during this time because of course we know that having only just completed an economic impact study of the uh, creative sector countywide last year we have really good thorough data which shows that our sector the creative sector drives the economy to the tune of 46 million dollars a year and we want this economy to be healthy so that we can help drive it for everybody afterwards so i think the combination of the work that we did last year on the economic impact study and the good work that will come from the results that we've received from these 257 participants of our survey um, will help us carry the torch so we've been hard at work and any upcoming uh, the big reveal when where's the report where will it be available so i have the raw data and i'm actually sort of looking at it um on our screen uh, on my screen now um you know we asked what we'll be doing is distilling the results a little and, and sharing key findings um it'll be publicly available if we were to share the raw data it would take a bit to sift through it but i can give you some you know some key findings now um, so for example for we we had questions that were specific to individual um, professional artists and questions that were specific to our arts organizations um, and then questions that 
that could be for both. Um, so if you're an individual artist, you know, 64 of you said you would lose over 30 days of work. And of course that would be much more. We opened this three weeks ago. So um, the number of days would probably look much longer now, especially since we know what the forecast is. Um, or close to 70% said that an appearance or performance was cancelled by a venue. Of course that's the case. Um, project delays, unable to access studio space. Organisationally, 66% said they'd cancelled or were planning to cancel an event and unable to reschedule. Um, almost 40% said major they were experiencing major financial impacts, uh, implying either closure or dramatically changing business models. 70% um, of organizations said their employees were inelig ineligible for paid family leave, disability insurance, unemployment insurance, paid sick leave, sick leave or workers' compensation. And 70% said, 77% said Nevada County Arts Council might consider starting a relief fund for individual independent artists or organizations. Um, and so we're considering that now in light of um, the duty that the county has with its relief fund in ensuring um, that, um, you know, uh, uh, that the frontline um, needs of the community are met. Um, we know that the arts are often not thought of as first responders, whether we do or not, but um, we, we are certainly second responders and we will carry this community when we come through this. So that's something we're seriously considering for now. Great. And uh, Ursula, I believe your plans uh, changed a little bit. <laughs> yeah, some of them did, for sure. Um, yeah, I mean, I think I've been really lucky in that some of, some of my work's been able to continue in the studio. I have my studio here on the property, so I've been able to keep um, painting towards shows that, I, that have definitely been postponed, but um, hopefully just that. Um, so I have a few shows that were meant to be later in this year, maybe they'll be next year, but I'm still working towards those. Um, I'm also uh, working on a commission, a couple of commissions I lost, and definitely um, I'm, I'm, I do a lot of murals and most of my mural work has, has gone. Um, but I was, or at least for the moment, <laughs> I'm hoping that they will, um, you know, a lot of them are just postponements rather than cancellations. Um, I was lucky actually this week to be part of something that was really amazing um, that I'd love to share because I think it was really a positive thing, um, which was this uh, stay at home mural festival. It was called Home and it was put on by Pangea Seed Foundation. They do um, environmental um, art projects all over the world. But this particular project was, um, was put together and it was, uh, it was over, uh, around 800 artists I think participated from 60 different countries. So I was one of one of those and just uploading our process. So it was over the week of Earth Week, Earth Day, um, celebrating the 50th anniversary of, of Earth Day. Um, <clears throat> so the so the you know, obviously it was with an environmental message and the um, the idea was that we all use, you know, repurpose paint, paint we had lying around the house. We didn't go out and buy anything and we all painted on the sides of or the, either the inside or the outside of our own homes. Um, so that was a really exciting project and really like um, positive project to be part of and feel like it was a, a kind of a community worldwide effort um, and to, to watch the, pro the process of so many artists um, from all over doing these amazing pieces really from you know everywhere and all on different kinds of surfaces you know whether they're the outside of buildings or the inside so um, it was really nice and it really felt something that was uh, very cohesive and and uh, community-based and sort of artists coming together at a time that's quite hard. Where can um, the rest of us see it? Um, so there is, I will share the link in the in the chat, um, there, there, the website is pangeaseed.foundation um, and they, uh, they, oh, oh, oh do you mean my mural? <laughs> um, yes, that's, that's too. Okay. Please. Yes, yeah, yeah. So, so the project is pangeaseed.foundation um, and then my mural I've been sharing on my social media account, so um, you can definitely see those there too. But if you follow the hashtag home 2020, um, you can see lots of murals in process and, and different artists who posted within that hashtag too. So um, be sure to check that out. All yeah. right, great. And if you can, if you can post uh, the link in the chat and make sure that you post it to all panelists and all attendees so that everybody can, can see it. I will and do for sure. Yeah, thank you. 
Cynthia. What's happening? Oh, sorry. That's okay. There we go. Can you hear me? Absolutely. Okay, Beautiful right. outdoor, outdoor background. <laughs> yeah. I'm in the process of moving, so my house is filled with boxes and got a nice quiet outdoor space. So yeah, I've had to cancel our season of art walks for this year, and um, we were supposed to have the first one tomorrow. Um, so that's a bit of a bummer, of course. And um, I had plans to open my own shop in downtown Nevada City. Um, grand opening was going to be April 10th. And I had to pull out of my lease and sort of put all those plans on hold. So it's been a lot of big changes. Um, so now I'm working on trying to get my shop inventory and my jewelry business online. Um, and that's in the works. And I'm hoping to get a virtual art walk going where we pair some downtown businesses with some local artists and set up some virtual pages where they can promote their um, what they're offering, whether it be some sales or specials or just their online inventory. But I want to keep the vibe going for 2020. Um, but um, where we just keep not social distancing, but physical distancing. Great. That that is that's that sounds really great to have this this project. Uh, that's that that's pretty amazing. Looking forward to, to hearing more about that and to get that uh, going. And I see that uh, Lorraine, uh, of course, is with us. Miss Gervais, what is going on? The uh, in the world of a performance artist, uh, everything is. Everything is shut down. And that makes all of us who are performance artists pretty sick at heart. And I am, of course, speaking for myself personally, but I also am in contact with a lot of my fellow musicians. And, you know, I, I've seen that some musicians are able to grab their guitar and set their iPhone on their counter. And, you know, they're doing, they're doing nice things for the community. Some of us don't have that, like that's not the kind of performer that I am. And uh, it's sort of like when you're in a studio, it's sort of that, you know, you're, you're isolated, but you're recording and you're creating. It's not the same thing to me as being in front of an audience. So in, in terms of all of us musicians that play real time live, this is a huge blow because uh, personally, I don't, I don't know when the culture is going to change. Well, I think, you know, back to what we used to all feel good about going out and listening to music and having good times. I've been contacted to do a wedding this summer and it's very small and it's on someone's private property. But um, yeah, it's pretty heartbreaking. And a lot of us feel pretty paralyzed because I just don't know when um, that, kind of art is going to come back. It's just not the same as an artist to stare into an iPhone. Um, the connection isn't there. And for me, I'm a collaborative artist and um, it's instantaneous and it's collaboration with, you know, singers and the band and what we do happens like that. You can't really do that when you're set up on a Zoom call and then you've got all the technical glitches of, you know, the drums are going to translate at half a millisecond later than the guitar player over there. I mean, it's kind of technically crazy. So I was talking to my friend Jacob, who is in San Francisco. You know, he's lost every single gig. His living is at zero. My drummer, Richard, that's his income, Gary Regina. Like there's, and a lot of the gigs, most of the gigs, 99% of them are all um, under the table. And when you play at parties and at bars and you rely on tips, there is no um, unemployment for independent contractors if, if that's how you get your money. And I worry about all the musicians who have relied on that. 
you know, like the golden era was a great place to play and we love them dearly. It was all under the table. There is no record of them paying us because it was all at the door, whatever you paid at the door. So I, you know, I don't know, looking forward um, on a cultural level, what it's going to do to the world of performance artists like us. You know, I think for dancers, if you're on a stage and you've got, you know, six feet of reserved seating, it's not the same. You know, I, for visual artists, and I'm one too, it's a different story. You know, you always create art mostly by yourself anyway. But yeah, dancers, speakers, I don't know, musicians, it's a whole, it's a whole nother ball game. So I have not been particularly creative. I have been, um, I did clean out my office though. That's, <laughs> dusted the piano. That's awesome. Um, we're going to try, some of us musicians are going to try to get together in someone's backyard on Sunday and you know, it'll be at least nice to see everybody's faces, but um, yeah, I don't know what's going to happen to Nevada City uh, music scene, any mu live music scene going forward. But as far as community being able to support you, please tell me where we can buy CDs, download music, actually paying for the download of the music and not just, you know, sharing. Yeah, well, that um, I get 0 0.008 cents every time someone listens to something online. So when I get a check, you know, every couple of months for $26, that's kind of a big deal. You know, I look at how many thousands of people have listened uh, to me. Um, you can go, I mean, most artists these days uh, have their music up on, you know, Amazon and Spotify and all those places you can buy music. Um, but nobody really has CD players anymore, so that's really changed. Um, you know, I'm just, I'm just not sure. I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not a beacon of hope right now. And turning to Ms. Molly Fisk, and uh, would you mind introducing your cat, please? He's 20 and one quarter years old, which is why he gets to do whatever he wants. And sometimes that means joining a Zoom call. Right now he's sitting at my elbow looking in the other direction with disapproval of the subject matter. I, I, do, I, do, I do apologize, I did not mean, and um, please convey uh, my uh, absolute willingness to be uh, another uh, human in the servitude of the feline overlords. I said she likes you. So you want to hear about poetry? Yeah, and how, how are you doing? What are you doing? Um, so I have some regular jobs. I teach cancer patients at the hospital and I write an essay every week for KVMR which I can sometimes finesse with a rerun, but I try not to do that more than every seven or eight times. So I've been writing and teaching. I have not felt creative. Some of the writing is not what I would call my most inspired. I've written two things about the virus itself. And what I see among my friends is some people are just bloated with new work. They are overflowing and they are if not excited, then at least feel this great momentum because of what's happening in the world. And other people are completely shut down. And I'm sure there's something in between, but those are so noticeable that, that they're the ones that I really see. And I'm in the latter category. I'm just not, I feel like I was stunned by a blow to the head and I haven't come out of it yet. You know, I can still get dressed and I know how to make my computer look okay for a Zoom call, but I get things done so much more slowly and I feel so um, mute, inarticulate. Um, and sometimes I can relate that to being upset at the circumstances. And other times I just feel like, you know, we went into a different dimension 
at the end of February or whenever it was, and I don't know how to swim in this water. So um, in terms of myself and my creativity, as a writer, I work alone all the time with myself on a page, but I live alone also, and my other work is generally alone. So what I have always done is to go out in the morning and eat breakfast somewhere among other people. And I grew up as a kid doing my homework in front of the, at the kitchen table with all my siblings running around and the dishwasher going and all that stuff. So I work pretty well with a lot of human white noise. And that has been absent for me, and it's really interesting how much I miss it. I did not have any idea how valuable that was to me. I did it all the time. I mean, I liked doing it. But I didn't know it was one of the three or four crucial things of a life. Um, so that's one way that my own circumstances have been affected. I had, I wrote this book, sort of. I edited this fabulous book. It's right here, California Fire and Water. It's available at the bookseller. I just delivered some to them this morning. You can buy it online, I mean, on the phone from them, or you can buy it online. It's all over at the usual places if you'd like to get it that way. Um, I had scheduled 20 readings in April for that anthology, and we we had two of them online with audiences of 10 or 12, and the, all the rest of them were quote-unquote postponed. Um, and we'll see what happens with that. But I'm not sure what else to say. That is, that is perfectly okay, even for a person who uses words and crafts words. That's totally, that's fine. That's a, that's a, that's a reaction too. Thank you. And I believe Elena is uh, joining us on the phone, right? Can you hear us? Hi, everyone. I'm sorry about my internet is painfully slow even in the best of times and now it's basically worthless so um yeah i'm very interested hearing what all of you are saying and myself i'm i'm trying to stay as positive as possible so i will stick to those things because you've all voiced a lot of my own frustrations as well and i think for me the main reflection i've been uncovering inside myself is to know that as creative beings this is an opportunity for us to dig in a new way and that part of that it means possibly channeling the creative spirit into a different format for myself i've been really working in the garden that seems to really help ground me and keep me um, in in a positive state of mind i feel it, it's good to see things growing and coming beauty bringing beauty to the the surroundings as a musician of course i share a lot of lorraine's views and frustrations and it is it is difficult when it, some of us being already on the edge a lot of us artists and then that that little bit of income that was our grocery money now be disappearing and i do feel so um strongly for the musicians of this community that it's i i I know it what it's not we not of course we don't just do it for the money um but having that gone is is going to be a real hardship for a lot of us um but I feel like if it would be some uh, at all helpful uh what Saul and I are doing is we've been working the last few weeks to really dial in our recording studio in hopes that we'll be able to offer some kind of program for local musicians that will be some an affordable way or some kind of I'm looking for donors I'm I'm talking to some people to maybe sponsor some artists to come and do some recording in the studio which they might not be able to even in normal times afford but especially now so that the creativity part of making music could can be can go forward because one thing I've noticed is that when as a live performer when that's taken away from you and you want to be able to channel your musical energy towards something. A recording is a possibility. It's something that is very creative. It's it's very fun to do. You can maintain even distancing in, even inside our studio with the isolation booths and whatnot. And it seems like this it, it something that we could offer to the community where it would be people could find some new inspiration 
and some people are songwriters, some people aren't, but, but regardless, if you're a musician and you want to collaborate, you could collaborate in real time playing with other people in the studio and be creating. You could also even come in one at a time and create with the other tracks that people are had that have already recorded. And so I'm kind of just trying to focus my mental and emotional energy towards finding a solution that would be not just for ourselves, but for all of us. And we've even been talking about possibly doing an online radio station so that some of these recordings could get out there to people. Because I agree with Lorraine, like for me, performing in front of a phone or a computer, it's just, it, it's almost more depressing than not doing anything. I, I don't, I don't enjoy being on a screen normally anyway. And it is the interface. It's not something I, I like to support my energy in. So I'm just throwing that out there. Um, if anyone has any ideas for potential sponsors for these kinds of programs that maybe could help to offset the costs of running the studio and paying the engineers, which Sol and I are not engineers, we just create the space, uh, would be super open to that and and love any feedback from, from anyone that you know or are talking to or any of you all about um, some way we could we could do that and set up some kind of program. Oh, and That's Elena, I'm just going to suggest that um, each of you should really, every time when you speak, please introduce yourselves and say what you normally do and where people might, uh, may recognize you from because um, we don't always see the faces like this. Oh, okay. Sorry, I thought I was up, up you know, somewhere in virtual, but um, yeah, Elena Rayo and um, my husband Saul Rayo and I have Ancient Wave Studios, a recording studio, and as well as being performing artists and recording artists. Thank you. And um, thank you, Pascal. Thank you. And uh, Sheila. Hi, I'm on mute. Um, so I've been busy. I think that's my... Wait, wait. <laughs> Who are you? What do you do? Uh, well, a lot of people know me different ways. There are very few people know me all the ways, I guess. Um, I'm Sheila Cameron. I'm a painter and a visual artist and a writer. Um, I also uh, am on contract with the county currently working on board priorities and the COVID emergency response messaging and communications. Um, my husband and I live in Nevada City. Greg is a sound engineer at the Miners Foundry. He also works at AJA and we're, we're big fans of the Miners Foundry, big supporters. Greg's on the board there. So um, I think echoing what Molly said about productivity just in my art channel has taken a big hit. Um, I, I also really just want to send a, send a ping out there to every artist and every person who's just not feeling productive right now. We are in a collective global trauma and it is okay to take a minute and take a breath and have a bowl of ice cream and just not do anything for a couple minutes. So yeah, I applaud everybody who is out there and just creating and thriving. Um, but a lot of us aren't, um, especially those who have school age children that used to go to school. So um, my husband and I are both doing our day jobs from home and trying to um, do distance learning with two age school age children when that would have been maybe some of my studio time. Um, but creatively, I feel like it's very difficult to comment on something that we're all living in right now. We don't have a bird's eye view of actually what we're in right now. So I'm just trying to stay um, busy and engaged and helpful wherever my time and talents can be of help. And I think um, that is really... Uh, trying to communicate and create connection around this trauma so that we don't spend time fighting with each other, that we spend time mending nets, as they say, um, for the new normal, whatever that may be. Um, and using 
all of our creative resources to look for some uh, new ways to face the challenges that are going to keep unfolding, you know, in the, in the coming months. As creative people, we are used to doing more with less than creative problem solving. We are each a small business in our own right. It's not a business versus arts and culture. The entire vibe of Nevada County and our success rests on um, how we show up and how we're able to engage. So we all need to be at the table talking about it. So that's, I guess that's what I'm doing. <laughs> and um, of course you, you um, the, uh, the projects you do for the county. So there's, there's quite a few and there is also um, there is, of course, the, the Nevada County Relief Fund. There is, uh, there are other projects, and you created a a Facebook group that where there's really a lot of support, and I have yet to see the uh, a common thread devolve into the um, well, sometimes. Uh, incredible nastiness that is so common to to many Facebook groups. So um, I think you did you post the the group in uh, in the chat there. I did, and and I think you know I that that's really something that I've been trying to explore since the the internet first began. Since college, when I was studying writing and fine art, I was also working in the computer science department. And so I would have a lot of computer engineers show me the way people were connecting around the world and realizing that this could change everything about the way artists show up and take up space. And um, I have always thought and advocated for a higher standard of how we treat each other online, which is not to um, edit and police each other's conversations, but to just have your online conduct be a point of pride. You know, at a, at a certain point, you don't go to a mall and have to check a box to say, I abide by these rules. If I walk in the door of the mall, we just have an agreed upon standard of behavior and conduct. Um, and I think this is an opportunity where we're spending so much time online to really reflect on those questions and things we've said or done or interpreted on the internet or misinterpreted on the internet or how we apologize to each other or how we try to understand each other, how we share vetted information or how sometimes we share not good information because it aligns with our worldview. Um, and to really take a breath and, and look at how we're using this really powerful tool right now and what is the artist's role in that world. Um, I think it's an important one. So, you know, more specifically this group, I created it um, almost immediately after the um, social distancing was announced and it was rolling in towards the shelter in place. And I knew that people were going to want to connect and talk to each other in Nevada County specific to this. And I just made a very clear statement that this is not a moderated page. You know how to behave and everybody really rose to the occasion. It's, it's been amazing. Very, I mean, not even, not even a really a harsh word. People are really showing up for each other in Nevada County online. So I'm very proud of, of what we're doing over there. Which, which is why it is so great that in Nevada County, we have this, this, this plethora of talent and you, all what you create, what uh, others create. And there are, of course, the, the new ways. I got a, an email from Eileen Blodgett who said, hey, I'm just chiming in that Denise Way and I, we're hosting online art classes via Zoom. Um, we would love to spread the word that after years of teaching group uh, classes at uh, ASIF uh, Studios in painting, drawing, mixed media, and printmaking, we were nudged into offering many of those classes online, and they're hosting a Sunday morning acrylic painting class on Zoom, and they have had their usual local students join, but as well as students from the Bay Area, New Jersey, Ohio, South Carolina, and Denise is also offering drawing classes and also kids drawing and uh, manga classes. Uh, and you can go to 
sfstudios.com to find more info because after all there is uh, uh, nothing like making a big mess uh, apart but still together but apart so that's but um, here's my my question to uh, our visual artists here, uh, where can, where do you find art supplies now? Uh, I Sorry. Go ahead, go ahead, Sheila. <laughs> well, I will say like any visual artist knows you already have too many art supplies. <laughs> well, so. for, for, the, for, those, for those of us who, who all of a sudden uh, have time on, a, uh, on their hands and who want to get it, how do you do it? locally so um i so far i've been lucky to mostly have everything i've needed um i do have a, a couple of sources online that um good art supply stores that i use and they're still open and still shipping um <clears throat> but they're not locally based um and i also actually recently had to have a canvas made i didn't have all the material for the canvases so i actually had a local um, friend artist build that panel for me just because I didn't have it would be easier for me to pay him to do it than to actually go and get all of the materials I needed to because I didn't have the right size canvas or the right stretch of bars or any of that stuff so um, that was also nice because I felt like I could you know this was a commission I had and I could actually give a local artist um, the money for that so that felt good too. <laughs> yeah. And I encourage people to definitely check out that the Facebook page, Virtual Shop and Support Local, that we were just talking about. I have seen people ask for everything from, you know, pull it to, you know, farm starts to paints. I asked for beads for my daughter and somebody said, oh, I have these in my drawer. I can drop them off to you. People really are doing sort of the stone soup of supplies and needs right now. Um, a specific ask is usually met with a, a specific answer in our community. Um, there are some stores, I know Ben Franklin is doing some limited pickups um, at safe social distancing as well. And the um, hardware stores are available with some supplies as well. And I suppose the same would go for um, music instruments or uh, everything from, I don't know, from uh, sheet uh, note sheets and guitar strings and all that stuff yeah it's all it's all online yeah yeah i just wanted to add one more thing that um you know art is such a human connect and connective connection i guess that's what i miss the most and i think that's why some of us are just not able to do it is because there's nobody on the other end who you can go back and forth with. So, uh, you know, for those of people, and I'm a singer here in town, I've sung for the last, since I was five years old on stages, and I am worried that by the time this whole thing is over, my pitching arm is gonna be gone. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's like I've spent my life pitching games, and if you don't keep pitching, um, it goes away. And so I just, you know, I try to go out and sing in the woods, and so far no one has called the authorities, which is good. But um, anyway, for those of you out there listening, um, just remember that that's what sets us apart, is our human connectedness and our artistry back and forth. I think that's what most of us artists want. Um, Pascal, may I, may I mention, of course, that one of the, Sheila spoke about the things that defined us as a community. Um, and with my Nevada County Arts Council hat on, I would say that this coveted state designation that our county holds under the state of California as a California cultural district, we have one in Grass Valley, Nevada City cultural district and another up in Truckee, where we are two of only 14 California cultural districts. The world is looking to us to be um, the bearer of, to see, to see us through these times, and we will. Um, uh, I, I sort of feel like it's a marvelous challenge to all of us that live within Nevada County to be, um, you know, a beacon of light for other 
wannabe cultural districts across California, across the nation, because of course it's a nationwide trend, this special designation. And we're, the, we're only the 13th state in America to have this special state uh, program. So I'm, I feel very fierce about this. We are going to make it through this and we need to sustain each other and to think about what that means and what is required. Keep talking to the Arts Council. Um, we are listening um, and together we will, we will find a more stable path, um, however circuitous the route into the future. And I would like to, to hear from each of you what, what me, who does not have an artistic bone in her body, uh, what can I do? How can I support you? How, what, what can we as a community who are so lucky to have all of you here, what, what can we do? Each, I want a very specific ask from each of you. And I uh, don't know who wants to go first, but just please, just lay it on us. Well, I, I wanted to... Wait, um, could just, can you just, please, for uh, the people that listen to us on uh, KVMR, can you just uh, identify yourself uh, before you launch yes. into the task, please? I'm Juliet Morris Williams, and I uh, run the Osborne Woods Gallery at the Miners Foundry. And it's a very challenging but exciting time for artists, uh, visual artists, um, because we have to challenge ourselves to find new ways to express. And while online is a little bit awkward um, because you can't fully see something, um, I sculpt as well. So it's very hard to look at something in 3D if you're not experienced showing things, but let's all try, let's support each other. We um, need to um, find our way onto the internet if you haven't already and let people know that you're there so that you you can uh, show your work. And um, I would love it if people looked at our pages and see all the wonderful artists who are there and who are trying to keep going and, and um, express what the world means to them at the time. Elena, I see your microphone lit up. Yes, this is Elena Rayo, and my ask would be to envision a step-by-step -step process by which we could be allowed to come together again in a way that feels safe for everyone and that it's something that goes step-by-step -step in stages so that we can have maybe tiny little concerts and then a few more people and a few more people because I really do feel that our human connectivity, our desire and um, ability to be in the presence of one another is, is absolutely crucial for our mental health, emotional health, and our physical health. I think we need this. I think we will all find ourselves in a not very healthy place if this is not something that we can create. And if we are something in the world to be an example for others as a, as a cultural or creative community, then if perhaps it is up to us. We're not looking for permission from the higher ups in this way. We are working with them to say, here's our suggestion. This is what we could imagine could fit within the parameters as things develop. And to, to put that out there, let's, let's, let's start seeing that happen. Let's see it unroll. What does that look like for all of us? That's great. Who's next? I'm next. I want right. your me. I want you to become a patron of mine on Patreon, which is a crowdfunding platform for creative people that if you don't know about it yet, you should go look at it. There are millions of people on there, all kinds of different artists making all kinds of different forms of art. Um, I've been doing this in, for three and a half years because poets don't usually get paid for poetry. And I haven't been paid for my radio essays, even though I just wrote this afternoon number 476. Um, so go to Patreon slash Molly Fisk and check out what I'm doing and look at other people. It's a great way if you're not on there, any of you guys, I'd be happy to help you get started. Um, 
the direct connection for me because my books are small small produced batches because I'm regionally well known and nationally known a tiny bit but poets don't get famous we don't make lots of money even Gary Snyder doesn't make lots of money um, we need to get support in in other ways than producing books I'd be delighted if you wanted to buy my books but the Patreon money helps me stay afloat and do the writing in the first place. And it's incredibly emotionally valuable for me to have at this point 81 people who care that I'm actually writing every day and who are willing to put in a dollar or two to support that. Great. Any, anyone else that has a Patreon account? You guys. <laughs> Well, there. They, I, I, I guess Molly just gave all, all, all of you some homework. I did. I do. It's yeah. really cool. Well, I guess um, this is Lorraine oh. okay, again. I guess going forward, I would like to put it out there that um, don't forget about all of us. Just because you don't see us out performing or you don't see someone's art hanging in a gallery at the moment, for everyone out there, as soon as you can, um, <laughs> go to someone's website. Mine is LorraineGervais.com. You can see all the wonderful music musicians that I have played with. And, you know, it's sort of like if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there, is that tree even there? <laughs> so um, in the future, hire, hire us to play for your weddings and your funerals and your baby showers and your divorce parties. I mean, I've played all kinds of things and that's um, all the musicians around here are ready. So when the time is right, don't forget about us. We're still here for you. I've got one thing to add. Um, this is Ursula Young. Um, I'm an artist living in Nevada County and muralist and painter and illustrator. Um, so one thing I would say as well for visual artists is almost all visual artists have, many at least, have websites, social media, um, and this is a huge way that we all get our work out to the world. Um, but a lot of us also have shops on our, on our websites and we have, we have products, we have t-shirts, we have, you know, um, prints. And that, that's, you know, that goes, that shop is directly usually run by us. And so that goes 100% into artists. Um, you know, pockets. So that's a great way to support artists right now is just go check out your favorite artists and have a look on their websites and look online and, and, and see how, you know, what they have available. And, you know, maybe it's, maybe you can't afford a painting right now, but maybe you could afford a t-shirt or a, a print. And, um, you know, art brings so much joy. And I think at this, this time, it's more important than ever to bring that into our lives and our homes. So um, I think that's that's one way we can be supporting artists in general. <laughs> so I'd like to add, um, my my husband and I are are very lucky that we can both work from home. Um, but Greg's second job is at the Miners Foundry doing live sound. That is not doing live sound anymore. So um, supporting the Miners Foundry Cultural Center would be really um, impactful right now as our venues are starting to look down the line of what the new normal might be. Um, trying to pencil out those uh, numbers is a huge challenge. Secondly, I saw in the comments, somebody um, really made the point that artists are sensitive souls and that um, they, people are facing depression or new feelings of hopelessness that they maybe never had before, um, mental and physical needs. My second ask is to really check in with yourself and take care of yourself. If you need anything, the first place to start is dialing 211. They can connect you with resources from suicide prevention hotlines to places to get food, shelter. Don't wait until you're in a crisis or an emergency to ask for help. And um, just in support of my day job, just please share good, reliable, vetted information. Know that your friends and neighbors are working seven days a week trying to keep everyone safe and get everybody back to work and thriving. Um, 
and just working within the laws of the state and and Nevada County needs to show up in our own amazing special way but just believe that you do have a friend at the county who is is working really hard to try to figure out um, how to get us all back together again. Well, and with that, Center for the Arts really needs a huge help as well, because they've had the ultimate Murphy's Law that everything about renovating their building went wrong, literally everything that could went wrong, and then as soon as they got it open, they had one performance and have had to shut down. So they also are in dire need um, for people to donate and think about, just like Miners Foundry, these venues. I, I would I would add to that um, for all uh, for all of us who've enjoyed listening to each other and participating in each other's art as audience members over the years. Now's the time to support artists and arts organizations. Um, if you can't immediately find the donate button, don't let that stop you. You can find a way. Um, now is the moment. Uh, we just held an online uh, festival. Uh, about 10 days ago, the Sierra Poetry Festival, despite all the odds, and managed to pay all our artists, despite having lost the money that we'd already spent on our uh, the rental of the venue as it was cancelled, um, and and having lost sponsors, we 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 you know charged ahead and did it because we wanted to support those poets. During the day, we made sure that every single one of the 800 pre-registered Zoom attendees and thousands watching had access to the links for places where they could buy the individual most recent book of the said performer or poet. So there, there is a way for both presenters um, representing arts organizations to ensure that their musicians are getting um, uh, are getting are being supported creatively and also for um individuals make sure that you have you know the donate button really handy um and then i would say lastly um we're going to want a good recovery plan for the arts and we've been thinking at nevada county arts council in terms of um in the national endowment for the arts if only we were a current um or past grantee, we would have been able to apply for the, um, uh, the, the, the available NEA funds, but we unfortunately aren't. So we're looking now to create um, an application to support recovery planning for the creative community. Anyone want, who wants to be part of that planning, please be in touch. Um, Pascal, you do the most amazing job um, with Ubernet. Um, you disperse valuable information and draw um, key people together. You probably need support yourself. You probably have a membership, a subscription. Um, so we need to keep supporting local services such as yours, who are part of the heartbeat of this community. Yes. Yes. There. Cynthia, I saw that you have uh, you absolutely have to add what what is your ask please my ask is that as artists and musicians that um if we feel inspired and need some support to think outside the box think think of ways that we can get our works out there and get people to support us a lot of people have mentioned some really great things um and um, one thing that I'm doing is offering a jewelry subscription program. Um, and so a way that one can support me personally is by subscribing to this. It's a $100 buy-in and you can find the link through my Etsy shop, which is lootandlorejewelry.etsy.com. I'll provide the link. Um, and then to, you know, Follow the First Friday Art Walk page, um, putting on my, my other hat here as an event organizer. Um, and on that page, I'll be posting some updates on how we can support um, our downtown businesses because I'm really scared right now that our downtown will soon be a ghost town with shuttered businesses. And I really don't wanna see that happen. So 
I'll be posting some links there on how people can support the local businesses and posting some links on how we can support our local artists and links to their um, online shops. And, um, but it's, it's a scary time for all of us. And um, if you need help, please don't be afraid to reach out to your friends and neighbors. Um, we really are all here for each other. And I thank everybody for being part of this. Thank you, Pascal, for putting this together. Um, so I think we, we can get through this. We can. Um, it's scary, but we can do it. Perfect way to, to end this webinar. Again, I really want to thank all of you for uh, a very honest conversation and a very needed conversation because um, we're all in this together. We are all scared. We're all uh, sometimes angry, sometimes scared, um, most of the time physically distanced. So, but it's, it's okay. We, we're, still, we're still all here. We'll, and eventually we will be able to see each other in real life. But until then, please support all these artists, support the venues. If you can, please support them. And, you know, if, if you can't um, write a check or make a donation, um, ask them if they need help with something. If there, if anybody needs, if they, if they can use volunteers, um, and just uh, for, for one second, I will have to put my uh, fire hat on and say that um, the Nevada County and the Fire Safe Council they will be coming up with this uh, great program, the free green waste disposal, and they need 200 volunteers. So if you go to Connecting Point 211. And you can uh, just three sites, there's one in Alta Sierra, one at the uh, Old Bohemia Mill site, and one at the Penn Valley Rodeo Station. And if you have time, if you want to volunteer, if you want to work out some of that frustration, you, hey, please go there, sign up, and don't, yes, don't forget all these faces you see here. Because... Yes. I just needed to add too that we're working really hard behind the scenes to make sure that all the volunteer opportunities have safe social distancing. You will have you will be able to volunteer and drop off your green waste within the parameters of safe social distancing. So really, if you if you've got a little sweat equity to lend, we could use that help. <laughs> <laughs> all right. With that, thanks everybody. Be safe. Um, you, you will hear some things about parks soon that you won't like, but guess what? Um, please be safe. Uh, take care of each other. Thank and you we'll see you much. next Wednesday, Wednesday, actually. Thank you very much, Pascal. Thank, Thank you, you so much. much. Pascal. Bye, everybody. Bye. 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 Thank, Thank you. you. Bye.